What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pixel Play SideQuest, your bonus content here on Fridays. My name is Adam, aka CS Radical. Joined as always is Chris and K. Oh, wait, he's still sick. Well, I guess, you know, I guess 10 minutes later after recording, he, he just, that medicine just doesn't, I don't know. It just, does, doesn't Buckley's usually work a little bit faster than this? I don't know. I don't know what else to try here. <laughs> Poor Caleb. Every time he's sick, we riff on him. <laughs> I mean, look, I'd expect you guys to do the same if, you know, I was, except you guys can't run the show without me. So, no, uh, when, when you're sick, bad. it's a free, it's a free paid sick day. <laughs> yeah. Basically when it's like, Hey, I'm not feeling well, it's like, oh, I guess we're not doing a show this week. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. We'll think about what to do no, next week. No one, Bye. no one else wants to do any of the work. <laughs> Anyways, but speaking of people that apparently don't want to do any of the work, there's a segue. That's um, a segue. So an article came out earlier. I want to say it was either today or yesterday where, um, apparently Sony has been dabbling in trying to get, uh, PlayStation 2 emulation quality on PS5. And you'd think with a machine as powerful as a PS5, it would work. It's not. No. In fact, it's very, very much not working, which begs a lot of questions. I mean, the first thing I want to say is Sony. You know, you could just, you know, call, like send an email to the developers that run PCXX2. I'm sure that for a good price, they would help you with that problem. Because they seem to have a pretty good grasp on it, considering that I can play Shadow Hearts uh, from the New World, Rowdy Out of Stories. There's there, that was specifically for you, Chris. I got you, buddy. Yes, or it any was, other yeah. PS2 game out there, play it on an emulator. It will run at 60 frames. And I can even upscale this son of a bitch to being 4K at 60 frames, and it works fucking flawlessly. I think they have like a 97%. Uh, rate of games like that will actually work pr like properly yes they absolutely do and it you don't even need crazy hardware like speaking you know the ps5 should i have radiata stories dragon quest 8 and a few games that i i have the isos for that on our on my steam deck and they run beautifully to the point where there's hd texture mods for them all and all of this other stuff where i have Dragon Quest VIII running in crazy 4K on a Steam Deck's 800p screen. But it's there, and it runs at a pure perfect 60, and it looks amazing. So, yeah, there's no reason a PS5 shouldn't be able to run this stuff. Like, there's, there's the, the power is there. It is very much there. It, it makes it makes you ask the question, like, is it that they're not really putting their best effort into this because it's not something that they think they can make a lot of money on? Now, let's let's kind of go into that, too. Right. Like, look, like we've I think we've talked about this at some point. It could have even been back in the old days of cartridge and quarters before we before we put everything together here. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if they care that much. I think they're dabbling in it because they know that this is something that they could put on on, you know, premium and get a few more people in the door. But I mean, do you, do you think that there is a place to have an emulated system on these consoles? If, or is it even worth the effort? I think so for them, but they're not going to do it. And I think that they are purely doing this just to try and boost the premium subscription level for PS plus, just like the Nintendo switch has its expansion pass and you have to pay all this extra money to get into the switch online's more expensive tier as well. The, like these games and stuff, it doesn't take much usually to get them running now if you're going on the PC route and everything like that. Um, but what I think is happening here is that they want to make these tiers, these subscriptions more worth it to them. And they're, you know, getting set up here um but i don't think that they i don't think that they know how to properly do it in the sense of actually to make it profitable i think it is a very profitable thing they could do because if you take something like steam it's super easy to on a pc pirate literally everything it's just the nature of a pc but lots of people buy games on steam because of how easy it is how affordable it is and the features that come with it if you have good emulation of PlayStation 2 games on a PlayStation 5, lots of people would want to play the game there because it's just, it would be easy. You wouldn't have to do the setup yourself. You wouldn't have to go through, figure out perfect settings, all that kind of stuff. 
Sony would have already done that going into it, where it's like, here it is, it's running at 4K60, these are the filters we've applied, and it'll be across the board for all these games because everybody's running the same hardware. It would be like doing emulation for literally one machine. Um, but yeah, when it comes to, you know, do they care? I think it's not that they don't care. I think it's that they don't know what they're doing when it comes to it properly, if, if I was to guess. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a mixture of I don't think they're so into it that they're going to put every bit of resources they have into no. it comparatively to like, you know, a first party game that they really want to push down. Um, I think this is in a sense of they've got a small team that are working on it, a small team that, you know, it's probably just a side project. They're not putting everything into it. They're trying a couple of things. And it's it probably just doesn't have the budget to really take a deep dive into it and put their best foot forward on it. I think it's not necessarily a case of they don't know what they're doing, or it's not even a case of they don't care. I think it's a mixture of just there's not a lot of money involved into it, and they're not putting like their best people in it because they could be better suited elsewhere. 100%. Uh, and I think that Sony and Nintendo, Xbox has its backwards compatibility. I think they've done a very good job with theirs, but um, they're not like emulating stuff. They just seem to have figured out, I don't know what the heck they're doing be behind the scenes. They just seem to have been able to like get, you know, all the Xboxes still backwards compatible. Well, and I, I think, think they, they were doing it up front. At it. I think they have a yeah. better shot at it because the hardware tends to be the same across all platforms. For yes. Microsoft. Whereas like, we obviously know that Sony between PlayStation 2, 3, and 4 are completely different platforms. Completely different. And obviously the Nintendo's systems don't, even run in the same universe like they're just like completely different things that require tons of different hardware and peripherals yeah, like, and like everything sony, right? so. sony consoles are like different countries uh nintendo consoles are like different planets 100 percent. and the n64 controller lives on its definitely own alien planet <laughs> yeah that, that one's like a hidden moon that we don't know about absolutely um yeah, and I think that when it comes to this, uh, when, when I say they don't know what they're doing, I kind of mean it from a little bit of a business sense, but also I think, and this isn't on the developers who are the ones working on it, I wouldn't put it on them, because like you said, they're probably a small team, not a lot of budget. They're not going to use the emulators that already exist. Like Nintendo doesn't use ZSNES or BNES, whatever it's called, the Super Nintendo One and and same I mean, boy for using Game Boy. Yuzu until they figured out that they need to shut it down. <laughs> yeah, they were like, shit, everybody started using our program. Um, but yeah, I think that they don't want to use the PC versions of these things because obviously that would just be like, hey, Nintendo's charging us a subscription to use this free tool that already exists. So they have obviously had to go a different route and probably also to protect their IP and stuff like that, where they have made it where they've built their own emulators from the ground up. And the reason the PCSX2 or whatever it's called and all that is so good is because it's a fan project that's like 20 years old. So it's had that many years worth of updates on a system that doesn't really change computers get upgraded but it's not like they've had to move to new platforms yeah it, like right? i remember when if when i first tried using it and it didn't really run very well and then one no. day i was just like you know what i'm bored let me go let me go try this out and see what happens when i play shadow hearts and i booted it up i'm like okay this runs pretty decently and then i was like yeah but it's still it still looks pretty blurry it's like ps2 games have not aged well and then yeah. I was like, okay, I wonder if there's any sort of mods for it. And I quickly like Googled for like a couple of minutes, found a couple of options I can tick. And I looked at the game and I'm like, oh my God, it looks like this game just came out. Yeah. What the fuck? It, it, it makes these games look new, which is insane. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all fan done. So, and it's not like it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy, no. but there's but been there, many but years. When there's passion, it definitely yes, yields there's way passion more fruitful results. And time. And I don't think Sony has, or Nintendo has the passion because for them, it's like, we just need to make these subscription services keep people subscribed. So we got to keep adding stuff just a little bit at a time, just enough so people don't unsubscribe, but not enough so people feel like, oh, there's so much here, I only need to subscribe for three months and then leave. You have to feel like you can't unsubscribe because Turok will get added next month or something, right? Yeah, you um, know, the real, the real game changer in Turok. <laughs> yeah.
Um, but yeah, like I've tried Sony's um, emulation with uh, Legend of Dragoon. I have that game. I also have Harvest Moon Back to Nature. I think it's that one. I don't know why I picked it up. I, I don't know. I just wanted Harvest Moon in my seasons, life more. Yeah, you know why. Yeah, I needed, I just needed more. Um, and the emulation is decent in the sense like it runs the PS1 games, but also the options aren't great. Like the only thing the Nintendo and the PlayStation emulators have that are better than like you could find elsewhere for free is this very well made rewind feature where basically you hold it down and all of a sudden it shows you frame by frame everything you did and you can just scroll back like you're rewinding a Netflix movie you're watching and start it from somewhere else. That's remarkable because on PC and stuff like that, that feature has always been not great. Um, but that's the only thing I can really think of that I want to praise where it's like, this is so much better than everywhere else. They're all behind. Like the feature, the options for like, oh, do you want, um, you know, do you want to have a very crisp look? Do you want to have the CRT filter? Do you want to have this? They've got the minimum options on both PlayStation and Nintendo. Neither of them offer button mapping. I will admit on the PlayStation, I can see why. The PlayStation controller has been the same since PS1. So no matter what game you're playing, the button mapping doesn't make sense. But on the Nintendo one, I don't understand what their issue is. I was playing Switch Online. I actually have the expansion pass or whatever it's called. I have the family one with my family. And I was playing F-Zero X. And it like looks great. It feels great. Until all of a sudden, you go to use a specific button. On the N64 controller, it wasn't L and R you used. It was always Z and R. But Z is the L2 button on the controller, and R is R1. So when you're drifting left and right with F-Zero, you're hitting L2 to go left, but R1 to go right. And it doesn't sound like much of an issue. And it, and obviously, but when you're you know, so well it's trained nice. to like, if one, yeah. tri- if the trigger is is one, you expect the trigger to be the other. Yeah, and the worst part of this is R2 is used for nothing in the N64 emulation. So it's not even yeah, like it they would... made it just both buttons or something, it, it right? Seems, it seems like it would be very easy. Like again, like with just even custom custom build, uh, customize a build. Uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for anymore, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, but like button mapping, you, you can something. you can change the mapping in almost every other emulator out there. One hundred percent. And with Nintendo's, I, like it gets worse. Game Boy, obviously, you've played Game Boy Advance, the original Game Boy. It was B and A. B was lower than A, but A was jump and B was run. And you used to hold the system like this, and you do like a thumb roll to go from B to A. Not like a Super Nintendo controller where B was jump and Y was like to run or something. It made sense on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance because of the physical device you were holding. But when you play these games, I've tried. It's so hard to play a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance because you're trying to run and jump as Mario and you have these amazing buttons that are like a Super Nintendo controller, but you have to use the A button to jump and B to run and you're trying to do the thumb roll, but you're holding a Switch. You're not holding the long Game Boy, which made sense that your thumbs would be like this. You're holding something like an Xbox controller or like a PlayStation or the Switch, right? And it just doesn't have the same comfort. So even playing those games, I could play for half an hour and be like, this is uncomfortable. I can't do this. Not to mention even the fact that the Switch doesn't even come with a D-pad if you have the regular Switch at all, which is a blasphemy for almost like 99% of these retro games anyways. um, But yeah, there's no button mapping on PlayStation or Nintendo. Um... The actual graphics features are very limited. It'll be like, do you want CRT or do you want just the pixels? And it's like, okay, but what about the size of the screen? Do you? There are people who want integer scaling where the screen keeps the exact ratio and it never gets you know moved for one of their TVs, um, or or maybe they just wanted to take the whole thing. Like, there's all those options aren't there. Um, it's more they just gave you the option to save state, and you can rewind. And you can put a CRT filter on and you're done. And that's all you get with these. And you go into something that's available on Steam for free, like RetroArch, it's fully customizable. You can make any button you want to be this. I could play a Game Boy Advance game, but I could make the X button on the Xbox controller be B, and then the A button, which is obviously different from the Nintendo A button, but the Xbox A button be the normal A button from a Nintendo controller. And now I'm playing 
a Game Boy game, but like I would have if it was on a Super Nintendo controller. And there's all these options that just aren't there. I don't know. They just haven't put in that effort. And it's, it's, it's crazy that they're definitely doing the bare minimum to be considered like not a disaster. They would never do this, but it almost feels like it's at a point now where the best emulation it seems to be on PC. Like mm-hmm. if, if you're Sony, for example, it might actually be in your best interest to be like, hey, why don't you just make a separate subscription tier that is like a PC storefront where it's just you, if you have this subscription for, I don't know, let's say 20 bucks a month and here's a library of a bunch of games and you can just download them for, for as long as you have the subscription and the same way that you download stuff with PlayStation Extra. And here's the emulated system that, again, let's just say they end up buying the emulation system from what PCXX2 does. And like, you just do that. It feels like it's almost a better option for it because let's be real. Like most people who are doing emulation are doing it because there's no point in bothering on console because it doesn't run correctly. And yeah. there's way better options for them to obviously just steal. Like, like let's not kid ourselves. It's, it's pirating. Right. So, you know, it, it makes more sense for them to just not put any money in this and just pirate it. So if Sony at least puts some sort of option out there, that makes uh, it's running off of hardware that's actually working correctly. Sure, it's going to alienate some PlayStation players to be like, well, I don't have a good enough PC for that. To which I go, mm, most of the time for an emulator, you don't need it. But okay, I guess if you don't have a if you don't have a computer, I guess you don't want to. But like, in the same way that you know, not everybody has X Game Pass for PC, but that's an option for others too. It's like, I don't know. Like it, it seems like it, they would never do that too because they wouldn't want to alienate their customer base. But like, it feels like it's getting to a point now where just emulation on these consoles is just, it's not going to work out to the fullest extent of it. And there feels like if you want to have, cause this goes back to the preservation conversation, right? That there just mm-hmm. needs to be some other way. And seems like PC is the way to do it. But obviously like these companies are not going to want to put their, even though there are games that they may never bring back onto their consoles for real, it's they just don't want to have to put them on another place because it may take their customers away from using their consoles. Hundred percent. I think that both of them too can learn oddly enough from Sega of all companies because I think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but the Sega Genesis collection, whatever the newest one, there's obviously this meme where it's like every time there's a new console, Sega will release its fifty games as a collection. But I mean, every single time it's like fifteen or twenty bucks. And they actually have done a really good job with their emulation and have a ton of different options in there. Like if you load up the Sega Genesis collection, it has six different video filters and you can have, it's just checkboxes. So you can have like three of them on and three off. It's fully up to you. It gives you a little image so you can see how you affect it. Um, it's got the yeah, fast we're, we're forward and now, the like, rewind. It, it has like, we have all these different packs, like the Genesis collection. You have the recent Calabunga collection for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like it's starting yes. to become a thing where it's not the console manufacturers that are doing this a lot. It tends to be other developers that are doing it for their libraries. But yes. of course, if you're a PlayStation gamer, if you're a Nintendo gamer, you want Nintendo games. You want PlayStation games. You don't want just Capcom making stuff or you don't want Konami doing stuff or Sega. You want Sony to go here. Sly Cooper one, two and three, bam, go. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's crazy. And it seems yes, to be the actual these first party console makers because they're afraid of, you know, people because they they know if you they put out the PS2 version of a game and people bought it like the virtual console had with Wii, there was that argument. It's like I already bought Super Mario World for five or ten dollars on my Wii. Why do I have to rebuy it again? It's like, oh, well, it's not rebuying it. Now we have subscription service and all that kind of stuff. Right. Where Sega has gone the other route, where they didn't do this on console because you wouldn't be able to, but the PC version of the um, Sega Genesis collection, they give you the ROMs. Like, you legally buy not just the, the, the game to play in that emulator. They literally have a walkthrough. Sega published it. How to find the ROMs. They are now legally yours. You can use them. And they opened Steam Workshop open for it, where... When it was open, um, hi, Doug, um, that when they um, made it, the Steam Workshop, you can upload hacked versions of the ROMs in there. So if you're finding, uh, I don't know, 
Booger Man, or I don't know what the heck is on the collection. I yeah, hell yeah, let's head. go Booger Man. Yeah, Booger Man. If Booger Man was in the collection, I apologize if it's not there. But if you're finding it too hard, well, then you can find the hacked version of the ROM where it's like infinite health. Load that in, and when you load up the game, it actually has like obviously the UI is beautiful. It's a kid's bedroom in the '90s. But you scroll over to that game, and it's like press A to play. Press X to uh, button map the controls. Press Y to see what hacked versions of the game you have. And you can do that and then play a hacked version. So not only are they letting you buy the ROMs and legally giving them to you so you can use them, they literally said if you want to use them in a different emulator, go ahead. You can just take the ROMs. They just cared. You paid your $3 per game to buy the game. And here, you legally bought a ROM. Instead of you just stealing it from us, because that's what you would do, how about we just make it easier for you? For $3, you can just buy Booger Man. Here's the ROM. We'll also give you a great emulator that looks amazing and all these different features. But if you just want the ROM and go play it in RetroArch, go ahead. And it's like amazing because there we go. We, they've solved that issue. Sure, they're not going to keep being able to sell that on PC. But again, that's only PC on Steam. It's really hard to re-release the same old game on Steam. You wouldn't be able to do it, right? Whereas when there's a PS6 or whatever, they'll have another Sega Genesis collection. And they'll do the same thing. Just obviously the ROMs aren't on there. So I would feel comfortable to buy the Sega Genesis collection. Because Sega has done a really good job at making a great emulator and working with the community to have all this other stuff and on PC, the Steam Workshop and stuff. Whereas it seems Nintendo, PlayStation, you know, they're doing the bare minimum to keep you locked into a subscription service. And I think that's what's probably really causing the issues. Because if you think of Nintendo on, uh, not Switch, on Wii, um, even Wii U, the, the virtual console was like amazing. You paid $5, you got Super Metroid, or $8 or whatever it was, and it ran flawlessly. Like, there was very little issue, and at the time, it was a fantastic emulation machine. Like, the save states were there and all that kind of stuff. Maybe not as many features, but I mean, it was the mid-2000s. All those features weren't even really there on PC either. It felt like it was actually pretty caught up and was a genius system. Um, but obviously, subscription services are different. They're not trying to sell you a $5 game. They're trying to keep you locked in to, you know... $60 a year or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where it seems like a problem that's never really going to fix itself. Right. Yeah. Cause like it's like, it's not really in their best interest to go ham on it because it's not really worth nearly as much money as just pumping out a new game is, but it is something again for like the preservation conversation and many other, you know, other things. I mean, obviously like we grew up with these games, so we want to play them again if we can, if we have the option to, but it just seems like we're at a point now that it almost feels like, you know, the little that we do get from first party is going to be what it is. It's going to run okay. But if we really want to go down the best route, it's going to end up being through, you know, your your PCXX2s, your, I mean, what used to be Yuzu if we're talking like Switch things, but obviously like, you know, BSNES or Fusion for Genesis or Messin for NES or uh, uh, Virtual Boy Advance, I think is, is Game Boy. Like all these examples, like I'm just thinking off the top of my head of all the ones I know of. And like, that's going to be where it is if you really want to do it. Now, granted, it means there's going to be a lot of piracy involved, but like, you know, it, it it's it's just kind of the point that a lot of people are kind of at where they they don't want to spend like three hundred dollars on a copy of a of a game that you can't find on NES anymore, for example. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Hundred percent. So it doesn't make sense. It's a whole other conversation for for another time, but I think we're going to cut it off there because I mean we're gonna we're just going to talk about tech shit and emulation forever if we keep going at this. <laughs> but uh, uh, 100%. that's going to do it for this side quest. So obviously, like the video, subscribe to the channel since we are on YouTube here. Link tree at the bottom there for you to look at. Link to our Discord, link to our socials, all that jazz. Keep in mind Mondays is retro rando, Wednesdays is the main show, and Fridays you always get this bonus content here. So we will see you on the next one. So take care. Bye bye for now.